Should we get this party started? Let's get this party started. All right. What are we going to talk about? I'm just kidding. Well, let's see. <laughs> Does being bilingual make you an interpreter? No. No? Absolutely not. I definitely thought so until, yeah, um, yeah until I, I took my first, until I went to the first Saturday class at UCLA. Yep. And then I was like, oh my God, I have a moral responsibility to not interpret because I. Yes. Yeah. It's literally a moral responsibility. So yeah. tell me who you are so that the seven people watching know. <laughs> Um, my name is Losha Soriano. I was born and raised in Peru till I was 11 years old. Um, I moved to the United States in 1989, so that will age me. Um, and, um, and when I moved here, I spoke Spanish. I spoke German. And then I started learning English. And then... I forgot everything else and I just spoke English for most so of So that's, all. you got here, you started learning English at 11. I started learning English at 11 after, okay. you know, learning German, which is, English is a Germanic language as mm -hmm. well. So it went hand in hand. Okay. Um, yeah. How about you? Well, I was born in Guatemala and I came here at the age of five in 1990. And same, I only knew Spanish, so I had to learn English, but I remember it being super easy for me. I remember uh, knowing that I had to learn another language at the age of five and noticing that the children around me didn't speak the same language, but somehow I grasped it very fast and I learned by reading billboards, mostly like billboards and just stuff like that. And I would miss, miss, um, I would put like the verb first, like I would say Studios Universal instead of Universal Studios because I didn't know because in Spanish is Studios Universales. <laughs> so then I learned as I went on and because when we asked for directions once and I said Studios Universal, the guy was like, what? I don't know what that <laughs> is. So that's my story. And I also kind of forgot Spanish as I, even though I, we speak Spanish at home, right? But our education was solely English. So keeping that right. Spanish was a little difficult. Well, yeah. and, and I think, and I think that the Spanish that we speak at, speak at home compared to the Spanish that we are expected to be able to speak in a doctor's office or in a courtroom or in a deposition or even at a conference, it's a, it's a whole different language, you know, than what we speak yes. at home. The register definitely is exactly different. and English for too. me it was um it was sports so going into sports for Univision or Telemundo my Spanish was terrible and I went in there thinking like I speak both languages and then in my interview it's like wow your Spanish is really bad and I'm like what <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> you're like my mom told yeah. me straight <laughs> yeah the professional Spanish is totally different than the Spanish that we speak at home Definitely. Right. Yeah. And uh, my experience with Spanish was my mom and my aunt, they, um, hi guys, my mom and my aunts owned a um, bilingual traffic school. When we moved here from Peru, my aunt owned a traffic school in the heart of Los Angeles. And, wow. um, and our Saturdays and Sundays, uh, aside from us having to go to work because, you know, it's a family business, um, we dealt with everybody in the Spanish community who needed traffic school. So it was very basic. Um, and it was like, you know, it was just basic Spanish. And, and I learned different dialects. And, um, and I got to learn very quickly that um, we have a melting pot of different Spanish speaking countries here. Um, most of in them. LA in LA and, um, and you know, some, some words that are just basic for us um, could mean really bad words in other countries. And, yes. um, you know, and that's, and that was also part of, um, part of, uh, uh, of being, um, I guess, educated in interpreting is that you, you learn how to, to neutralize your Spanish so that it could be broadly understood as well. 
Yes, exactly. So yeah. Losha and I met at UCLA. Yeah, we're UCLA translating. <laughs> we are UCLA alumni. And yeah. uh, I think we, we, if you missed it before, we both said we got, we went into UCLA to study interpreting thinking, easy peasy, we speak both languages, no big deal. For my experience, first day of school, I remember our class, I went in there like, whatever, I'm gonna pass this with an A, no, no big deal. And the teacher said, um, how do you say insurance in Spanish? And I think we all raised our hands like, come on, everybody knows that. And then I think somebody said aseguranza and her face was like disgust, like, no, that is not how you say insurance. So he says seguro. And that was the first time I was like, oh my God, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> what Spanish do I speak? So that was yeah. my first experience getting into the interpreting because I did go in there thinking I'm bilingual, this is easy. But just the first words that came out of the teacher's mouth, the professor's mouth, it was like, oh my God, I am not, I need so much help. <laughs> yeah. That was my experience. Yeah. Um, I, at the time when I started at UCLA Extension in their interpreting program, I had a, a similar experience that, um, you know, just because I'm bilingual, I can do this. And at the time I was working at a, at a nonprofit here in LA where um, they, they serviced it, many different parts of, of, of the community, but I worked at their food bank there. So I had the opportunity um, and you know the blessing of my bosses to go ahead and and speak Spanish and and you know and um, interpret a little bit there, and um, I, I came to realize really quickly by translating you know the information sheets about community events like for homelessness. I mean I started in uh, translating those and it just became um, it became hard you know and and I I went back and revised them like a year later after I was done with the course and I was like who did this <laughs> oh my God. so th there's an evolution here and and I believe that there's a there's a moral uh ethical responsibility um you know to 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 learn and it's a continuous learning experience to be an interpreter exactly you know, because we're we're people's voices at the end of the day you know and there's something that every time I hear this, I want to correct it. And I hear it on TV. I hear it in regular talk. People say translating when they're verbally interpreting. And I'm like, no, it's an interpretation. So how about you explain to our viewers the difference between interpreting and translating? Okay. So a big part of our, our task, our... Uh, the job that we have is, yeah, I mean, we're language bridges, right? We're the conduit, but it's also our, our job to educate our clients as well as yes. the person that we're interpreting for. So, you know, it irks me inside, you know, I just want to be like, no, it's like, oh, get the, get the translator. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not translating today. And sometimes I'm you know, interpreting. I'll make like a, like a remark, like just a snotty remark to myself. And I'm like, well, I'm not translating today, but the reality is that we have to educate people. You know, I would yes. say, um, so interpreting is the spoken word and translating is the written word. Um, and, I believe in my experience that if you want to get better at interpreting, you probably have to get practicing on translating because yeah. my dad always said since we were little, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to speak well, you have to read people that speak well, they read. That's just yeah. the bottom line. And, and, you know, this is a, an oath that I personally have in our profession is to continue you know, educating myself so that I could best serve not just my clients, but also, you know, the people that we're serving. How about yes. you? Um, how about me? What? How do I, the difference? Yeah. How do you um, explain it to people? <laughs> They're um, like, oh, here's a translator. I just, I, I just say it, translating is writing and interpreting is the verbal. I'm using my voice. So I think here at my house, like, um, my brother, my mom, my brother's girlfriend, Elisa, are kind of annoyed with me when 
when they say something i'm like no that's not how, i just say it i'm like way over there in the backyard like that's not how you say it i just tell them the right way to say it and i think they're used to it now but i, I think i could come off as annoying so i try not to be so annoying so i'm just like um you know just take a step back and then tell them later like this is how you say it that's this is the right you're saying it in an english version like like when english speakers just add an o or an a to a spanish word i feel like spanish speakers do the same thing i'm sorry the other way around so english speakers mm -hmm. when they don't know a word in spanish they just add an o or an a and i think spanish speakers do the same thing they just so, add an O or an A to like the word that they don't know what it or means. Or me. So, yeah. And, and sometimes I don't even know the word still. You know, like you said, we're still learning. Sometimes I hear new words that I haven't heard in, uh, that I've heard in English, but I don't know the, the, the Spanish translation. So I make it a point to go figure it out. But that's because our brains are now constantly thinking that way. So that's, that's a good thing about it, about us, the people who are the bridges, like you said, we give the voice to the people who can't speak the language. So we're constantly thinking, how do, how do you say it? I don't know. Or like, if it's a, like a word from Peru, like I asked you, what is pocho mean? <laughs> or I forgot the word. I'm not supposed to say pucha, it. Pucha. <laughs> pucha. <laughs> no, pucha. Pucha, pucha. Pucha, pucha. And in Guatemala, we say puchicas. 